Hey everyone, it's Tim from TimGonyer.com here, uh, back with another sketchbook challenge. Uh, we're working on part two of our Blue Heron sketch, which is exercise four in the sketchbook challenge. Um, and what we're going to do today is just take our H pencil and F pencil and our white colored pencil and lay in our first few layers of hatching and cross hatching. So, so we want to start with the harder pencils so we can't go super dark yet. We're going to layer in as much as we can and then in the next part we'll finish up the blue heron with some darker softer lead or softer graphite pencils. Uh, so let's just dive right in and start in with the layering. Okay I'm going to start out by using some white. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is just take my eraser pencil here and I'm going to erase down this top part of his head and then I'm going to start off with some basic hatch marks which are just basically lines like this and I'm going to trail all the way up the top of his head then to cross hatch that I'm going to start doing directional. I'm going to curve and I'm going to go in just above the eye as well. Okay, so we have a little bit of white on there. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to move down the face a little bit and again I'm going to do the cross hatching and I'm going to go really light on the bottom so light pressure on the pencil and I'm just going to go all the way up I'm going to keep that angle on my hatch marks all the way up to that little hood plate pace piece difficulty talking today then I'm going to cross hatch it. So I'm going to go the other angle. Just work my way up a little bit. So you can see the value difference. I made this top part brighter because it's in the sun. And this part down here just a little bit darker. Next I'm going to continue hatch marks down the front of his neck. I'm going to start changing direction so you can see I'm going this angle then starting to change okay and then on the front I want to do really light hatch marks and I'm layering them as I go down okay and then down here can do some long ones because you can see on the photo what I'm trying to do is make my hatch marks go similar to the reference photo okay so you can see just a slight value shift there okay next I'm going to go to an H pencil and I'm going to start in on this little dark portion of his beak and do some hatch marks really really light so that way the value is just changing a little bit and then I'm going to cross hatch it I'm going to go the other angle and then I'm going to do little hatch marks up to the eye then in behind the eye a little bit darker hatch marks right here there's a little indentation so again just hatch marks going in the direction kind of the flow of the shape so it angles this way to flow it up that way Kind of got that rounded piece, this piece right here. 
So what I'm doing is little hatch marks, just little scribbles around it. Okay, and then the beak itself, the value is a little bit darker than the white here, so we want to do some really light hatch marks going down. Then on top as well. And then with my white pencil, I'm just going to add a little highlight to the top of the beak. And we'll add more to that later. And this is just our first layer of shading. What we're trying to do is get our values uh, to be close. Okay, next one I'm going to do is just. Uh, alter the eye a little bit. You can see his eye is kind of pointed inward. So I'm just bringing the pupil a little bit inward. I'm going to darken this line a little bit. Okay, then I'm going to add a little highlight to the eye. Okay, and then I'm going to do an, one more layer here. On this section. And then another layer pushing a little bit harder now on the top of his head because we want that top part to be a little bit brighter. Okay, now I'm going to start working down the neck. But first, actually, before I do that, I'm going to go a little bit harder here, uh, harder pressure because I want this to be pretty dark. You can see, so you can really see the hatch marks here. So, I want to start doing some directional stuff. So I'm cross hatching now. And there's a little bit of a highlight on the front portion. So, what we want to do is keep cross hatching. until that front portion, it's a little highlight right here. And eventually we'll use a uh, softer lead or graphite. And it'll become a lot easier. So the more you layer, the darker it gets. So you can see I left this front piece a little bit lighter. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start shading the neck. And the feathers kind of flow this way. So I'm going to start right here and just really lightly, remember this is the first layer, so I'm doing directional.
So it's a little bit darker in the middle, so you want to keep overlapping so the middle of the neck gets a little bit darker. Okay, and I'm following those directional strokes. So here it starts to go down. Okay, and we'll start carrying these outside the line because we have these long feathers down low here. And what you can do if you want is take an eraser pencil and break up that line. You can erase the line to start with if you want to. Okay, now we'll get rid of that kind of bordered look because we don't need that anymore now that we have some shading in. Okay, but we would do want to go darker on this shadow. So cross hatching back and forth, trying to keep that direction. So remember, this part of the neck here, right in the middle, is the darkest, so I'm doing more cross-hatching there and layering it as much as I can. It gets really dark right in here, so just a little bit more pressure. Okay, then on this dark triangle, the feathers kind of go down this way. So again, just hatch marking 
in that directional shape. I'm not going too dark yet. Just getting my values down. Then I've kind of got some directional stuff here, curving with the back. So I'm not really looking at the reference photo. What I'm doing is just going with the curve of the back and crisscrossing or cross hatching to make this part of the back darker. Um, and since it's just the first layer, it's not even nearly as dark as it will be. Uh, we want to kind of play it safe at first. Okay, so that's kind of the first layer of the shading. Um, what I'm gonna do next is add in just a little texture. Because there's these little dark feathers in the light area. There's actually kind of a mid-tone right here. So this part's gonna be darker. And you got this mid-tone right through here. Okay, and I'll throw, I'm not going to do these little light downy type feathers yet. I'm going to put a little highlight on the beak going right through here, right underneath the nostril. There's a little bit of a lightness right through here, so just a little cross hatching in with my white colored pencil. Okay, then I'm going to take my eraser pencil, just kind of smudge out this line a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to do another layer here on this really bright area on the forehead. That way I can lighten up. this section here. Without losing my values too much. Okay, I'm going to darken up the pupil a little bit. And then darken up this section. So another layer 
around the eye. I'm going to maneuver in around that little circular shape. Okay, and now I'm going to do another layer. this dark piece up top. Okay, and then there's a little bit of a darker value on the beak just below the highlight. So really light cross hatching here. Little hatch marks, not really crossing it up. So just really paying attention to the values. It's a little bit of a darker value going through the mid beak here and then I'll cross hatch a little bit here just to make this triangular shape a little bit darker and then I'm going to put in the line for the mouth a little bit stronger Okay, and then I'm going to do another layer, this darker section. Okay, and then I'm going to take my eraser pencil here, kind of tone down my line. I'm going to bring my hatch marks all the way out to where that line was. So what will happen is it will kind of make that line a little bit fuzzier. Okay, and then I'm going to take my white colored pencil just kind of lighten this up on the front so it's quite a bright highlight on the front and 
then on the front of the wing it's quite a bit brighter going down So we'll brighten this highlight a little bit on the beak again. Okay, and before I get too much graphite on there, I'm going to put just a few little white streaks through this mid-tone area and on the back of the head there. Okay, so you can see I'm just cross-hatching to get this shape a little bit darker. Um, and we've jumped ahead a little bit here, but what it is is just um, a lot of layering. So we haven't used any soft lead or soft graphite pencils yet. We're still using the F and the H. Uh, that's because you want to layer your cross hatching a lot to get better textures. So that's what we'll, we'll call it good at this point. What you can do is keep going around. You can see I've done a few more layers, but you want to try to get it pretty much as dark as you can with the F and the H pencils to start with and then we'll start layering in more hatching and cross hatching with softer pencils which will make it much darker and will create even more contrast so we're going to build up those values really slowly so that's it for part two uh, stay tuned for part three where we finish this up and add in some really nice dark tones and maybe some stylized looks as well. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed part two of the Blue Heron sketch. Remember, there's one more part. Uh, what we're gonna do is take it to another level value-wise with more shading. Uh, we're gonna continue just the hatching and cross hatching and we're gonna use some softer graphite pencils in the next part so we'll get even darker values so we can create that range of lights and darks. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and uh, stay tuned for part three. Uh, if you want to join the sketchbook challenge, the link is in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.